It is Wednesday, February 14th. Once about every seven years, the stars align. The galaxy is in the perfect position. And hump day is also Valentine's Day. Today is a day where you give her the good dick. <laughs> it's where you have your blue chew or joy mode. You take it double dose. I don't recommend that. Please don't do that. <laughs> and you just really consummate your relationship. Hopefully you have miracle made sheets. Hopefully you want a bunch of money from either prize picks or my bookie to afford a nice dinner, maybe even a corner room in a nice hotel. Cause ain't nothing like hotel sex. It is a day of love. And I got to tell you two minutes before the show kicks off, my phone rings, Curtis Grant. I answered the phone. I said, motherfucker, how are you going to call me two minutes before I go live? He started going crazy on me. Like it was a pregame speech all about Valentine's Day and hump day. I mean, he was like, you better be hype after that, motherfucker. Curtis, you did your job. I'm here. Chris even brought me a nice little, a nice little Valentine box. I appreciate it, Chris. Really thoughtful of you. Enjoy your day, Menace Army. I have, I took I told Chris and, and our guy Pat that's in studio. I took had to, I took Justine out last night. I have to take my 12-year-old out tonight, my six-year-old out on Thursday, then a volleyball tournament in Cleveland this weekend. So pray for me, dog. Pray for him. We need super chats. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot going on, dog. I, I know a lot. But Chris, happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, kind sir. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. I know you said that this is the day that you're supposed to drop the good dick honor. Is there a day that's acceptable to drop the bad dick honor? On your birthday. Oh. I mean, you I you can never give bad dick, but like on your birthday, you could just lay there. Okay. You could just, you could be service. Okay. Right? And my birthday's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the good and the bad all in the same week. All in the same week. All in the same week. You're going to get both, Justine. In the ups and downs. Hey, as Mel Tucker says, I'm coming. I'm coming. Tuck is coming. Show ends at 1.30. Stretch and hydrate. <laughs> Plus, don't come home till 3. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, um, happy Valentine's Day, dog. I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm, I'm great. I, 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 I've been... Not complaining, kind of kind of bragging and complaining at the same time. If you're on Patreon and you did the leg workout that I put out, dog, holy shit. That was the hardest workout I've done since I was a football player at Bowling Green State University. Ooh. Like, it was a real one. I couldn't walk. Like, going down the stairs, I'm, like, holding both fucking railings. Justine and I both were blown out. So, it was a good one. I got a good one in this morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just a great hump day. What? When do you have a bad hump day, though? I don't know. I haven't had a bad hump day in a while. No, I always have a great hump day sure. because it's hump day. I know what's coming down the pipe, pun intended. And also, <laughs> I get my kids, all, my older kids. So I gotta, I'm going to have a house full, and they're going to have to go to bed and turn on some pink noise so they don't hear what's going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, it's a good day to be yorny, as Chris says. But, hey, let's get to it, Chris. Get it ready. Yeah. yeah. This is the product of a, of a, of a, a phenomenal hump day experience. Lukey, let him know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. I'm expecting at least like five or six new Menace Army members announcements over the over the next couple weeks. Yeah, I need it. Right. I, I, what is usually wait till about three months. So what is that? May, May 14th. I'm expecting a bunch of Menace Army to be like, yo, coach, what, here's a super chat. Shout out to the newest member of Menace Army. Yeah. What is nine months from now? Do November fourteenth, and and it's okay if you name your son after me. I won't. It, I will. I won't consider it weird. I will. So that's I, just I think, that. I think it's good. Well, you wouldn't like a little someone naming their son Zach. I I would question. Well, no, it's fine. You can name him Zachary Christopher. Zachary <laughs> Zachary Christopher. Yeah, that'd be fire. <laughs> Whoever does that lifetime membership to the highest tier Patreon. Hey, lifetime. <laughs> lifetime. I'll, I'll pay for it. Yeah, well, yeah. Fuck it. You, you get everything. You get everything. Um, well, hold on. Can I, 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 I was so excited about Valentine's Day. I didn't even tease the topic, the main topic. James Laronitis interviewing with the Browns, and I got a different spin on it. Everyone's going to talk about that today. Every Any show you turn on is going to talk about James Laronitis to the Browns. Why doesn't Ryan Day hire him as the 10th coach? Blah, 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 blah. Here's my question for you. Because I know how coaching works. I know how agents of coaches work. I know how it goes. Is what percentage chance? That's my question for the chat. Or just yes or no. Do you think James Laronitis' agent 
got his name out there for for a job at the Browns, an undisclosed, unknown job, like it's not even a job that we know what it is, to put pressure on Ryan Day to hire him as the 10th coach because I've seen that countless times in college football coaching. Do you think, yes or no, that James Laurinaitis' agent is the cause of all this media frenzy about Laurinaitis leaving when Ryan Day has an open job? That's my question. So anyways, Chris, let's get to the show. Let's do it. I almost clicked the Lukey thing again. We almost <laughs> went. We almost went two for a dollar. Hey, two for a dollar. Um, opening things up with Mr. Justin Jefferson. He wants to know the team's future QB plans before committing to a long-term contract. Hell it's, yeah! It's about that time of year, and there's the the rumors that he's worth a top five pick if the Vikings decide to trade him. Zach, what do you think? Absolutely, control your career. Mm -hmm. He is the best. Well, arguably. The best receiver in the NFL. He's definitely top two. He's the, yeah, I mean, whatever he is, it doesn't matter. I mean, he he deserves the max contract, right? And he does he's got to control his career. He's watching guys win Super Bowls. He wants to win a fucking Super Bowl. And he's one of the guys that has the clout, has the on-field resume to say, hey, yo, I, the money's all good. I want to win a Super Bowl. Tell me the plans. Who's yeah. going to throw me the ball? Because Kirk Cousins, nice guy. I watched the QB1 documentary. Great husband. Family life's great. House really organized. Not the fucking guy on the field that is going to win us a Super Bowl. What are the plans? Are you going to get somebody? Like, that's that's a fair question because he's planning out his career. Hopefully, barring an injury, he wants to win a Super Bowl. Can it happen in Minnesota? And also, like, he sees how these teams operate, dog. Like, if Justin Jefferson signs a massive deal and the biggest one in wide receiver history, great. He will be the first one to get blamed. If they stop winning and if his production dips at all with a shitty quarterback, they're going to ask him to restructure. Yes. So it's like, before I accept this money, I want to know what, like, who's going to be the guy? But, like, is there, is there a plan? Are we just going to keep doing this shit with Kirk Cousins in and in, in year in and year out? Like, what yeah. the fuck are we it's doing? Like, there's two pieces to this puzzle, right? When it comes to a receiver's career, how much am I going to get paid? And what's the team looking like? How good are we going to be? Those are the two things that matter, right? Outside of like some, you know, fringe shit. Like, where do I live? Because Minnesota. Hmm. What's, even, what's in Minnesota, bro? Just I mean, Minneapolis, the city of Minneapolis is, is, okay, is huge. I've never been, bro. But I also landed there one time to connect on a flight. And with wind chill, it was minus 38. So yeah, I'm cool. Huh, I'm bro? really cool. You can have all the, the fucking Mall of America sound sweet. I'll see it in July, if ever. But I mean, that, that's all fringe stuff. Two things matter. How much am I getting paid? What's the team look like? Like, are we going to be good? Who's my quarterback? Like, th those two things matter. And I, I think it's awesome that he's like, hold on, before I commit to anything, talk to me. What's the second piece of the puzzle look like? Yeah, what's the second piece look like? Do you think he'll be with the Vikings next year? Maybe you had a guess I mean, for the I, chat, too. Do you think Justin Jefferson will play for the Vikings? That's a question for the chat, yes or no. I, 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 I'm 50-50 I'm on it. Like, if they come back and present a plan to him that he likes, I think he likes it in Minnesota. I think he would love to stay and get a max deal. But I think they got to come with a serious plan. Like, here's what we're thinking. Here's how we're going to reach the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. That's just, I think it's 50-50. I mean, for him, right? Like, if I were if I were Justin Jefferson, I'd try to get to the Jaguars. That way you seem yeah. to, don't seem like a front runner. The team is really, really young. Um, they're, you know, they're in a decent spot on offense. Or Green Bay, even. But at Green Bay is kind of hey, cold. Don't do this. What? How about Cleveland? Oh, oh, that, that's right. That's right. Well, the whole, the whole Cleveland quarterback thing and like. No, I, come on. I know. I'm, I'm jumping back and forth. <laughs> Jump on the bandwagon for a minute. Deshaun's going to be great. Okay. Deshaun, all right. You know what? Fucking get him to Cleveland. Let's fucking talk about the Jaguars. Well, you want him to go to Cincinnati or Pittsburgh next? Well, well who, well, who would you want? Would you want Justin Jefferson for $120 million, or would you want Brandon Ayuk for $90 million? Justin Jefferson for $120 million. Okay. I just want a wide receiver one. We haven't had yeah. one in fucking like, I don't know, 40 years. I think Michael Jackson was the last one. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Jesus. Dude was good. Look him up. Yeah, but I mean, you guys had a wide receiver one with Terrell Pryor. Oh, my God. Okay. Thousand-yard receiver. Woo, there's only fucking 15 of those every year. Hey, Josh Gordon. Yeah, if he, yeah no shit. It's just amazing, right? Who was it, Megatron, that said yeah. he played every game high? He said – And we he couldn't get Josh Gordon to like – Oh, he smoked weed. Everyone smokes weed, NFL. Let us have our stud. He said, I would get high before every game. But that's, he really didn't get suspended for weed. And I used to tell my players this all the time. You don't get suspended for weed in the NFL. You get suspended for stupidity. 
-hmm. Like, you know, when they test, just don't smoke for 30 days, pass the test and then chief that shit up. Right. Like you get suspended for stupidity, not for weed. Yeah. Literally everybody, like there's a bunch of players in the league to talk about how much weed they smoke. Like, yeah. Y'all think Randy Moss wasn't smoking weed? Like, come on, man. <laughs> Randy Moss was in the joint at halftime. Hey, yeah, for real. And this is before gummies. Now they don't even have to smoke. Like Randy Moss might have been the Snoop Dogg of the NFL. For real. Like, <laughs> hey, dog, what you, is that fruit snacks? Nah, chill. Just, just leave me alone. Chill, 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 that ain't chill, fruit chill. snacks. Don't have any. You know what it is. <laughs> um, the odds came out. Shout out to uh, the books that, you know, like to put this kind of thing out. No. But the new favorite for Justin Fields' team next year is the Steelers at minus 125, passing the Bears at plus 200. <laughs> they move on from Mitch the Bitch Trubisky yesterday, I think. I don't know. Um, and now, you know, Mike Tomlin <laughs> loves Justin. It's Black History Month in the middle of a Black History year. Black head coach invented the Rooney Rule, and now they're going to have a black quarterback. The stars are aligning. He's won and won the whole time, and now we're going to have one. I just think I know there's some projection here because we're all Buckeye. A lot of us watch the Buckeyes. A lot of you are Buckeye fans, right? I love Justin Fields. I think he has a chance to be a great pro, and Chicago was the problem. That's what I believe. Yeah. If he comes to Pittsburgh and realizes his, his ability, imagine the conference. Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, and Joe Burrow. It will be nuts. And the AFC, we got a – who I think could be a really good quarterback crossing the line. Another one coming to the AFC. Like, the NFC is going to be left with a bunch of fucking dog shit quarterbacks. Shout out to the dog shit quarterbacks and Brock Purdy. No, this is <laughs> – uh, you will never be able to convince me that the Bears were not the problem. When I watched Kenny Pickett and fucking George Pickens, who, however you feel about him, I don't think he's a, a, a top end one, make the playoffs. Like, think about that, bro. The Steelers made the playoffs without any elite weapons on offense. Yeah. You'll never convince me the Bears aren't the problem. Never. No, they they are the problem. So shout out to uh shout out to Caleb Williams. Do you want Caleb Williams to get drafted by the by the Bears? After oh fuck him, yeah! After seeing him in that dress. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take his dress wearing fingernail painting ass to Chicago, a fucking third world country. Again, collecting the red flags. I don't know how it's going to work out for him in the NFL. Like I really don't know. And if I had a top three pick, I couldn't risk it on him. No, not me. I I couldn't do it. But but keep in mind, I have said for two years, dude is ridiculous. So talented. I just believe in the intangibles and it factor matter like a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, people, they will fall, they will fall in love with him at the, at the combine at pro day. If he does pro day, I mean, he's the type of guy that'll show up in a dress and be like, Oh, you working out dog. <laughs> you know, just, I'm chilling. Oh, yeah. See you at the draft. Oh yeah. I, I just could, I couldn't, I would not feel good betting my career on it, Zach. Nah, I wouldn't feel good about it. And maybe, like, honestly, maybe because he's viewed as a quote unquote generational prospect, this, that, and the third, maybe a team will get away with, or a GM will be like, well, I didn't want to draft him, but I feel like we have to draft him. So can I get one more quarterback after him, if that yeah. makes sense? Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Um, but in other news, leaving the NFL just for a quick sec, it sounds like Chris Holman's getting fired today. If it hasn't happened already. Why is he not fired this morning? Like, what are we waiting for yeah, at this I, point? You see, you got the speeding ticket? No. So we got a speeding ticket, and I and I read something that he says he said he was having some anxiety. That's why he was going 70 and a 30. He was also late to practice. Oh my God. I have never heard of a of a coach at a major program being late for practice. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a little wild. Like, aren't you just always at the facility? Yeah, I, I don't. So why are you driving? I guess I don't understand. You, I would have to know what time they practice. Like, if they, like, first thing in the morning is practice, maybe. But, like, I mean, we even when we practice in the morning, you had to be at work at 7. Practice was, like, like meetings were at, like, 8. Practice was at 9.30. Like, you can't, you're t over two and a half hours late. Like, I would be shocked. I, that, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. So I guess. You know what was more surprising? The officer gave Chris Holtman a ticket. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nah, it's not surprising, dog. No, nah, I mean, he didn't get it because he was going 70 to 35. Right. Yeah. He get it because that motherfucker did, can't win on the road. That's why he got the ticket. He could have been going to 36 and 35. And they saw that fucking name pop up on their computer. They said, woo, woo, woo. Like, hey, you're speeding. Yep. And oh, did you just mouth off? Disrespecting an officer. I said, yes, sir. No, you didn't. You said, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to find his ass. Yeah, and like, but but officer, I'm late for practice. All right, let me go run all your like, you know. It's gonna be a while. I called for backup. Right. Maybe maybe they'll get better if without you there. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're gonna let the sir step the, out of the car. I'm gonna have to detain you for like I don't know four years <laughs> for wasting these young men's time. <laughs> they will get better without you. So Chris Holtman out of there. It's funny the chat is in a weird place, bro, because they're like, hold up, bro. D like DJ's like, damn, like sad, easy gambling money gone. Holtman fired. Sad, easy gambling money gone. Thank you, DJ, for the five. Yeah, everybody was fading him, bro. I mean, and, and he'll go out. <clears throat> Having not won a true road game. Well, they they covered against Wisconsin. They right. covered. That's just like if we're trying to find silver lining. Woohoo! They covered. <laughs> There's no silver lining. Me and me and Pat were talking this morning, Zach, about like the last time it was fun to watch Ohio State basketball, and it was Chris Holman's first year with all Thad's players. <laughs> right, like that was the last year it was right. fun to watch. So. Um, I just want everybody to know that me and Zach are getting our resumes ready to coach Ohio State basketball, um, at least on an interim basis to, you know, finish out the year. Yeah, I mean, can't be that hard. No, I mean, for da for damn sure, we wouldn't do as bad as... as, uh, as well, no, I mean, we might, but it can't get worse. Right, it can't get worse. And you'll save a lot of, you'll save a boatload of money on your mm -hmm. car insurance. Yeah, and shout out to Gene Smith for, like, trying to be remembered the right way, right? Like... Bending on NIL and then like fucking firing Chris Holman before he headed out of here so he could say that he did the good things before he rolled out. Right. Right off of the sunset, Gene. Right. <laughs> this was your fucking fault for signing that crazy buyout. Right. Fucking crazy buyout. Um, I don't know if you saw, but the uh, the there's that documentary coming out about the uh, NIL over there at LSU. Yeah. And I guess LSU Athletics is going to get $1 million for the upcoming docuseries. Yeah, so it's called The Money Game. Mm -hmm. Really cool. It's going to be, I mean, the big three, right? Two of them are transcendent in the NIL game. Jaden Daniels is just like one of the best. I mean, obviously won the Heisman. Yeah. He'll be in a group of football players that make good money in NIL. But Livy Dune, there's not a gymnast in the world that can touch what she makes. And then Avril, Avril Reese is also a superstar in women's basketball. So it's going to be really cool. I'm excited to watch it. Just talking about yeah. really LSU athletics and tying in the money and the NIL. It's going to be really cool. It's wild, Barry, because of these three, I think that Jaden Daniels is the least famous. I think that Angel and Livy are probably more famous than Jaden Daniels. Yeah, Livy's the most famous. Yeah, I mean, Jaden's the least famous. Yeah, yeah no, I'm with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm saying I think Livy's probably the most famous. Yeah, probably Livy. I don't know. The dude won the Heisman, Chris. He might be yeah, I, He might I, be more famous than Avril Reese. It's Angel, so I Angel? guess that proves it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> See? <laughs> What the fuck is Avril? <laughs> the fucking linebacker for Ohio State. <laughs> you knew what I meant. Angel Reese. There you go. That proves it. Jaden Daniels is definitely more Talk, popular. Doc, I heard it the first time, and I'm like, Charlie's Angels. I'm like, let me just say it, and then he'll, like, get it. He'll snap it back, and you're like, nah, it's Arvell Reese. <laughs> I, I, I think Angel's probably the second most famous of the three, which is wild and just points to the good job that they've done with marketing because he's a starting quarterback for LSU who just won a Heisman. Or is it a shitty job? Jaden Daniels should be the most famous of the three, right? Well, he, he was just the best player in all of college football. Yeah. I guess I guess who's who ranked them in terms of in terms of famousness. I guess we'll take do no that. fuck that. Take Livy Dune out of it. That doesn't count. She makes a bunch of young dudes dicks hard. Like and and it's amazing. <laughs> and, and I'm just saying <laughs> she makes a whole bunch of penises rock hard. Yeah, and, and nothing. It's I mean, good for blood flow. Just because she's beautiful, I'm not saying she's not doing anything like classless or anything like that. She's just beautiful and a great athlete. More power to her. That happens all the time. I mean, we there was who was the tennis player? I forget her name. She was like world renowned as one of the best tennis players. She was ranked like 35th in the world, but she was beautiful. Anna Kornikova. Oh, like oh, she yeah. went. She was just okay, but everybody knew her because she was hot. Like, take her out of it. Is Who's Lee more famous, Jaden Daniels or Angel Reese? That's my question in the chat. Is Li How good is Livy at gymnastics? I have no idea. I was going to say, because we're <laughs> talking about her, like, I, like, has she won anything? I have no idea. I, like, this is not me trying to I don't date. care. Yeah, me, uh, me either. I have it Valentine's Day, Livy Dunn. Absolutely. Right? I, in fact, I hope, you have the, I hope you have the worst Valentine's Day, actually. Damn. No, I do. I do. That's what? rude. Why? We're, we're not invited. What the fuck? Why would I want her to have a great Valentine's Day? Did you day? ask? No. Well, you don't shoot your shot. You can't expect to hit. What are you talking <laughs> about? Just playing. Oh, no, no, no. I'm I'm a child of God. <laughs> um, they said that Angel's more famous than than Jane Daniels. That's what they're saying. Hey, hey, that's that's the the literally football chat is saying this. I've got a hat for him. And they give her the nod because she's got a title. 
She does have a title. That wasn't Jane Daniels' fault, though. Def- 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 definitely wasn't yeah. his fault. They had Libby doing out there playing corner. That, <laughs> right. was, that was the biggest issue. The biggest issue. <laughs> um, Zach, want to get a quick word from our partner and then keep the show moving That's in a, a groove. Great and, idea, yep. Chris. We'll be right back after this. Winter is here. We all know it. If you're up, up here in Columbus where I am, you really know it. And the biggest struggle for me in my house is what temperature the room should be. Thank God I found Miracle Me because they're the best bed sheets I've ever owned. I've said it every time it's on. I'm not kidding. I got it for all my kids. Justine and I have two sets. They're outstanding. And they're self-cooling. It's for, uh, They're made with uh, technology that's inspired from NASA. And they're self-cooling sheets that give you better sleep. So the room can be a little warmer. You get under the sheets and you're not sweating to death. It's beautiful. They're self-cleaning. They're comfort and quality. They're the, I keep saying it, the nicest sheets I've ever owned. They're a perfect holiday gift. And if you go over right now to um, trymiracle.com slash menace and use promo code menace, it, it's already slash 40%. You'll get an additional uh, 20% off. So 40% off already. You get an additional 20% off and then you get three free luxurious bath towels. Awesome Christmas gift. Go lock it in right now. And even if you, even if you know, if it's a little too late, you already, you already did all your shopping. Go get it for yourself. You won't regret it. I promise you. Go to trymiracle.com/slash/menace promo code menace to get an additional twenty percent off on top of forty percent and get the best sheets I've ever owned. The best. The best. Bar none. Yeah, the chat's still going back and forth, man. And then Caitlin Clark got brought into it. Obviously, Caitlin Clark, yeah. probably the most famous at all. She, she wasn't in the conversation. Yeah. She literally didn't go to LSU. This is she about was... LSU athletes. Right. And, hey, I need you to like this video. Please. What do we got? How many likes we got? Uh, you just clicked off of it. Oh, yeah. my uh... Zero. It says zero. Yeah, get the likes up. <laughs> get the Like the video. If you're going to make sweet Valentine's Day love today, like the video. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to. if Just if you want to. Not even if you're going to. Yeah. Or just if you're here. <laughs> yeah, if you're here, like the video. Um, Grap, thanks for the five. Hey, Coach, any chance you'll break down film by request for us high school coaches? I'd love to see the Kansas offense, all 22, for ideas to borrow. Yeah, literally anything you want. I'm not I'm not going to promise. I mean, but it's a long offseason. I probably can deliver on all the requests. But go on Patreon, shoot me a message on what you would love to see. Because I'm down to, I'm down to, I just love football. Like, I love breaking down and talking about and watching football and studying football. So that's a great one. He's Especially guys going to Penn State. Absolutely. I'll pick I'll pick a great game offensively for Kansas, and we'll break it down, see what they do. 100%. Send me a message on Patreon. You know, I, I love that offense. I know you do. I love that offense. Because it's gimmicky. You like and mid-quarterbacks and gimmicky shit. I like exciting quarterbacks. Like, I don't like I don't like Kyle McCord-style quarterbacks. Give me, well, like, no. give me, like, the, the JBs of the world. Like, that's a dude, man. What, 406 touchdowns and four picks in the bowl game? <laughs> that is the ideal <laughs> performance. I don't think that's just the correct stat line. Well, I think he had six touchdowns and four picks. Oh, you sound like you said 406. No, 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 no. He had four. four. You said 406 touchdowns. No, like 400. That, four, yeah, I know what you meant now. Yeah, my Give bad. Give me 406 <laughs> touchdowns. And, what? I don't think that's what he had. 400 yards, six touchdowns, four picks, I think. <laughs> it was fun. It was a great watch. Happy, thanks for the 20. Was expecting the rebrand this week. What is the update? Yeah, I'm just waiting on – I mean, I, I really could – Put it out, but we're just waiting. I think at the, by the end of this week, I actually have a Zoom today at 2.30 about it. By the end of this week, we'll have the graphic uh, templates for the show and, and everything, and then we'll announce it. So, yeah, it's going to happen. I said mid-February. It's going to happen this week. I, I think Friday is when it'll be, like, delivered, and then uh, Monday or Tuesday we'll roll it out. Well, this is a great one. Um, Dylan, thanks for the two. What was Mick's Valentine's Day workout like? Oh. Yeah, what was the mass? What what did the guys have to go through? Is it today they had to go through? No, it's, it, uh, it's always a Friday. Okay. So, so they'll probably, do it this Friday? Well, maybe it's today. It might be today. I don't know what they it, – it, it was usually a Friday, right? I, if I remember right. Damn, I might not remember. It might be on Valentine's Day. I don't remember. That's a great question. But that, it was awesome because they would just get – destroyed for two straight hours i mean it was a two hour workout non-stop like you're talking about like we're doing i'm doing my workouts i put on are cir- it's circuit training we do two circuits three exercises nice 55 minute these motherfuckers just non-stop like it's non-stop you're going to different stations and just getting blown out like it'll, there'll be a leg station be an upper body station then you'll go do footwork and rope pulls and and sled pushes and uh, what are they? Farmers walks, like all kinds of shit. Then you go to the indoor and 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 teams push big sleds. Like it was just chaos and insanity 
for two straight hours. And at the end, they're just blown to pieces. And Mickey's giving out those little candy hearts. <laughs> saying, hey, 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 JT, will you be mine? Like, just <laughs> fucking with them. <laughs> what, like, what workouts were more intense? What workouts were harder? The Florida Valentine's Day massacres or oh, the Ohio wow. State Valentine's Day massacres? Definitely Florida. Really? Oh, yeah. It was a bad deal. I mean, it was like barbaric. You get the pukers? Oh, yeah. Lots of pukers. Pukers? Okay. I had, a, I had a kid fall out. I had to go to the hospital. Didn't the kid's bicep explode or some shit? Like no, he, was, he had compartment. He got compartment syndrome in his legs. Oh. Which, like, that, you get that in, like, car crashes. Jeez. So, they, yeah. they definitely had to scale it back after that. Yeah, and they had to change the name. It's not called a massacre anymore. Although, everyone still calls it that. Yeah, it's one of the things that... He calls it the St. Valentine's Day celebration now. Definitely not Which a is even more fucked up, honestly. <laughs> but, bro, at Florida... I'm talking, you walked in the facility, they had pictures everywhere of the actual Valentine's Day massacre. It was a mob hit. And Whoa. they massacred like 13 people or something crazy. And they they had to have pictures of like 13 people wiped out by machine guns everywhere. Like it was barbaric. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. That's wild. It was. Yeah. Shit, that's, some, that's, that's a cancelable offense in uh, today's day and age. Oh, boy. Is right? <laughs> Uh, Brian, thanks for the five. Please Google the Caleb Williams dress photo. He dresses like an NBA player. I don't think it'll fly in the NFL. Zesty. I do wonder how NFL, like his teammates will react to him. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen some players dress fucking weird. Yeah. Like who's, lots of them. Who's got more red flags, you think? Johnny Manziel or uh, Caleb Williams? <laughs> well, Johnny Manziel was a red flag. He was the walking He was a flag. walking red flag. Who had better tape? Well, uh, I don't know. John, Johnny football. Johnny football was crazy in college. <laughs> That's the thing that people don't want to talk about, bro. Johnny was, was fucking doing it, dog. <laughs> but like in the SEC too. Hold on. But whose film has a more likely translation to the NFL? Caleb Williams by a mile. But it's Johnny was playing backyard football, throwing the ball thirty yards behind the line of scrimmage, like off his back foot, and somehow there'd be a receiver right there. And you're like, how the fuck is he doing this? I'm just saying, like, Johnny might have had better tape than Caleb Williams. I mean, if you put both on, Johnny's is more exciting. And he did it in the SEC. I, I, I get it. Like, Caleb's was in But a none of that, none of that film looked like franchise quarterback for sure. Definitely. I mean, none of it. Maybe the Bama film. No. He threw what? He threw a touchdown pass I from don't the pocket. Care. A single one. <laughs> he threw one. He was doing it, man. Better. He's got the better tape. He's got the better tape. Um, where are we at? Oh, here, right here. DJ, thanks for the two. I'd super chat more, but four times normal price flower. Shaking my head. Oh God, I haven't even I haven't even looked at the flower prices yet. Oh yeah, you gotta go get flowers for the gang, don't you? That's tough. Hey, gotta make your daughter feel special. That I've is- told my daughter since they were born, no one will ever love you like your daddy loves you. Every day I tell them. That's tough. That's Less some little fucking 14-year-old walk in my house. He knows what's up. Oh, yeah. I would like to be there. <laughs> well, you will be there. It'll be bad boys all over Here again. Here we go. Get this bitch moving. Oh, fucker, you look 30. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Zachary Christopher. That's a great name. But you got to change the your middle name to be spelled with a K. Chris, you watching those Defense 101 videos? I'm in a 32-person Madden League and may have a Giants opening soon. Let me know. Mm-hmm. let me know um no honestly i've just been trying not to fuck up the defense rather than like play better defense if that makes sense <laughs> yes <laughs> joe thanks for the five if chris is streaming on twitch make sure he's not signed up as an affiliate oh the contract states that you cannot stream on other social platforms well we don't stream that on any other social platforms we don't and i'm also not an affiliate mainly because of my own just procrastination yeah, no, we, Chris's Twitch streams are only on Twitch. They're exclusively yeah. on Twitch. That is in For now, case. at least. For now. <laughs> this is the one I was looking for. Dylan, thanks for the five. Man, what a glorious day. But York is our, is our Valentine's Day. No Bill O'Brien, no Chris Holman. We made it out the mud. Out the mud. <laughs> that is chaotic. Um, Zach, do you want to talk about the CBS mock draft that just dropped? They've got Jaden Daniels going number two to the Commanders. I love it. Marv, number four to the Cardinals, joining up with PJ. J.J. McCarthy at 13. Now, don't do that shit. I told you 14 or later. 13 to the Raiders. Michael Penix at 20 to the Steelers. Zach, I, I 
come on, dog. Like, what are we doing? J.J. McCarthy's better than Michael Penix Jr.? Yeah. Based on what? Uh, I, I guess his lack of knee injuries? I could buy that. Mm-hmm. But, like, really? I think it's funny because I think for your bet to hit, for you to win this, Zach, I think that J.J. McCarthy has to go to the Combine. I think if he goes to the Combine, if, I mean, he's, he's going to run well. Well, he's going to go to the Combine. Right. Well, well <laughs> depending, like, perform at the Combine. Like, do your, he will. Okay. Well, if, if he does, I think that helps your case a lot as long as some of the other guys do too. Yeah. Like, if he stands next to Bo Nix, those GMs, those scouts, what do they get horny for, Zach? I like mean, thick guys <laughs> with big arms that throw the ball. They fucking love it. I'm glad you said throw the ball. That was going super gay. Throw the ball. Like, they see you next to Michael Penix. Like, damn, that's a big Penix. Like, Jesus. long arms, tall, can throw the ball, played in an offense that translate, that could translate, grub as a lot of NFL concepts, right? They're out there throwing the routes on air. Like, you got to think about, it, like, of all the first-round quarterbacks, Zach, who is J.J. a better thrower than? Or who is he going to look better standing next to? <laughs> well, I, I, the reality is, Chris, we don't know. You're right. We've we never seen him really just open up his arsenal of throwing. And that's that's the only issue I have with J.J. He may go in, pro, in, in, in the combine and pro days, and all of a sudden you're like, damn, what was Harbaugh doing? This kid really can throw like that. He can spin it. He can spin it. But here's my... I think my biggest issue with JJ is one, we haven't seen it. So now we're just projecting. And two, I broke down the Bowling Green game and I know it's one bad game and you can't hold it against him too much, but damn. And it also feels like they kind of hit him a lot. Yeah. Like he felt like a right fielder at times, even in the natty Zach to only complete 10 passes. Like I, he, he might end up being a good player. Like he, he might have end up having all the tools, but both can't be true. Right. Like, he can't be everything we expected him to be and Jim Harbaugh be an elite, elite coach. Right. One, like, one of them has to be false. Yeah. And I tend to think that Jim Harbaugh is probably a better coach because even when he had Andrew Luck out there at Stanford and they had less weapons, what did they do? They threw the ball. Yeah. He threw for 3,000 yards. Yeah. They let Andrew Luck go do it. and Make it make sense. I, I can't make it make sense. Do you think he's going to throw the ball better than, like, a Jordan Travis at the Combine? I think he's he, he could, he's capable. Okay. I think I think it's possible. But again, like I've seen Jordan Travis make all the throws. Right. Like all the throws you want to see, I've seen it. I haven't seen it from JJ. That doesn't mean he can't. That doesn't mean he's not better. I just haven't seen it. Is he the hardest quarterback to evaluate in this class because of that? Fuck yeah. Cuz like w- with me usually like the two worlds you see kind of like they, they shoot the guy shoot up the draft boards is okay, he's got elite elite traits. We see the physical traits, but the production's not there. Yeah. Usually you don't see, oh, he he has elite traits or doesn't – we don't know if he has elite traits, and we don't know if the production's there because you don't do anything. Yeah, which I give him that – I do give him that that loophole, that out. It's like that if he goes and kills it and all these – all the – through the draft process, like it's true. Mm-hmm. Jim Harbaugh, especially because he didn't coach six games and you had an O-line coach as the head coach, they didn't throw the ball. Like, that's that's a fact. They didn't throw the ball. I think it's probably safe to say he's somewhere between Sam Hartman and Bo Nix as a player. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. I, I, I have a tough time, like, cementing him and putting him up there with, like, the Drake Bays of the world. Because, yeah, because I because they have this, a, a long resume. They got a long tape to watch. And I think if he goes to the Raiders, Zach, I think that's a that's a bad fit for him, to to be honest. I think he needs to go to a place that is run first, run heavy, won't have to air it out, and plays with a good defense. Yeah. I think that honestly, he might just be Brock Purdy, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I, I think, and I I don't know if that's his ceiling or where, where you would put that, but you feel good about that bet still, Zach? Oh, I feel great now. Okay. Um, I got a my guy, a guy I went to high school with, launched an AI company. And I got a video of J.J. McCarthy with a gas mask on that's, that's getting produced. So if, if, if they keep fucking around and talking about 13th or higher, I'm just releasing the video of the day of the draft. Talk. Here's J.J. McCarthy with a gas mask. He's smoking crack. <laughs> Dog, I thought you were being dead ass serious. No. Dude, right there. I was not. You Did I- you know that Michigan threw the 122nd most passes in a game? 
in all of college football this year? All of college football. 122nd most passes. Wait, who, who's like down? Who's down that list? Minnesota, Jeez. Kansas. Shout out Drew Aller and Penn State, Wyoming, Bama, Rutgers, Nebraska, Liberty. Wait, wait, Rutgers threw the ball more than Michigan. No, this is less. The only teams that oh, threw it less. Uh, Anyone I don't name threw it more. Okay. Uh, Rutgers, Nebraska, Liberty, Miami of Ohio. And then the bottom three are always the bottom three. Navy, Army, Air Force every year. And, I mean, that's probably by a fucking mile. So, Dude, Iowa, Air Force threw it eight times a game. Beautiful. Georgia Tech. I memories. Mean, like, the second, like third to, second to third to last, Navy threw it 16 times a game. Twice as much as the last place Air Force threw it eight. So, are you telling me that Iowa threw the ball more? Sure did. Than Michigan. They were 119th. They averaged 24.9 attempts per game. Michigan averaged 24.1. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Iowa had a more prolific throw game than the J.J. McCarthy-led Michigan. And it's not because of J.J. McCarthy. Think about that. Yeah. That feels really wild. Other Michigan news. Michigan just broke the combine record or the player record for most what combine invites they had 18 this year um it's being thrown out there this is a hyper impressive achievement zach how do you feel about them having 18 guys invited uh, yeah i mean i think that's warranted they had a veteran team 44 seniors i mean you, you had to assume that a lot of those kids would get invited I, I i'm not surprised at all yeah i mean jim harbaugh told us <laughs> that they would have 22 guys drafted yeah. So it's going to be tough. I hope they have at least 18 invited. Um, they break the previous record, I believe, of the 2019 LSU team that had 16, mm -hmm. um, I, I think. Ohio State's going to have a chance next year to kind of come close to that record, aren't they? You'd think. I mean, probably with some guys leaving early. Right. Well, even like even if just the usual suspects leave yeah. early and the guys that came back. I mean, because obviously Jack, the whole, <laughs> the whole D line, right? Yeah, the whole D line's going. So that's four that they would all go. Denzel Burke is going. That's five. Yeah, def defensively, Denzel Burke's going. Lathan Ransom's going. Um, uh, Davison, I don't know. Davison, like, Davison. Jo Bright. Jordan Hancock could leave early. Well, I don't think yeah, that Jordan Hancock wouldn't be leaving early. Is he? Is his fourth year? Yeah, he came in with Denzel Burke. Mm. Yeah, so that's that's eight. Iggy would be nine if he went. Yeah. Um, and then that's not even including offense. And then a guy like Cody Simon would probably okay. going to be a fringe combine invite. So that's 10. That's we'll, we'll get that 10. Maybe so that's <laughs> just on defense on offense. Judkins, Trey. Yep. Obvious. Those are obvious. Uh, Emeka, obvious. Mm -hmm. um, offensive line, Donovan Jackson's obvious. Mm -hmm. um, starting quarterback at Ohio State, you would think, gets the invite. I mean, if it's, if it's Will Howard, if it's Devin Brown, I don't think he leaves. Okay. So we we won't we won't give that one, um, and then Simmons. Yeah. So that that would put you at fifteen. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll probably fall short. Even yeah. at, even well, fifteen is I, fifteen was generous, and yeah, and that's obviously short of the record. So I guess that's really impressive, really impressive to have nineteen. But Zach, you said to me, I would hope they had what nineteen? They had or eighteen? They had forty four seniors. Yeah. It's not even half your seniors. <laughs> Doug, 44 seniors is a wild number the more you think. That, it's a crazy number. Because, like, what, you have 85 kids? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they were all scholarship kids, but they were still okay. 44 seniors is a massive class. Senior day had to take an hour. <laughs> like, everybody running out, giving flowers to their mom. Like, holy shit. This kickoff was at noon. It's 1.30. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Dude, did you see the uh, what Josh Perry put up on, on Twitter? No. He it, Well, so Mike Golick. On his senior day, it looks like he pissed himself. Like, he's standing there in the picture. Hold up, I'm just going to hand it to you, dog. I should have had this on screen, but I wanted to ask you if Lyman pissed themselves. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Wait, that's a thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dude, my players used to piss on themselves and spray water on it to, like, rinse it off. Dog. All the time. What else are you going to do? You're in the middle of the game. You can throw a pick, and you got to go back on the field, or the defense, you can't go to the bathroom. What do you want them to do? I coaches I used to they had a big they had big equipment trunks like massive like the size damn near this like half of this studio huge mm -hmm. and literally you open it up and there's all the little compartments and drawers if a coach had to piss you get an empty Gatorade bottle they'd open it up and you walk in there so the fans couldn't see it your back is to the cameras and take a piss and then all the linemen would stand behind you so you didn't have to but players would be like fuck that I'm not doing all that just piss on themselves and spray water dog that's nuts but on senior day dog like senior day before, like senior, they told but Chris, you like these, these players are 
like incredibly overly hydrated for don't the you game. walk don't you walk before the game though yeah he already he, he, on senior day zach on maybe, maybe they did it at halftime <laughs> senior day dog he just pissed himself in the locker room knowing you're about to get a picture <clears throat> and you're in that what that that weird mustard gold yeah come on man bad deal not going for it no bad not deal. going for it. guys don't wear diapers or anything you know they're gonna piss themselves yeah Bad deal. I'd wear a diaper on senior day, dog. <laughs> what the fuck? I'd wear a diaper on senior day. Hey, a PSA to you and Buckeye Nation. It's Joshua Perry. He oh. hates being called Josh. I so am I just so need sorry. I need everyone to know that. Joshua Perry. My fault, G. Joshua Perry. I just every, I don't and I didn't know that. I mean, I called him Josh all the time at Ohio mm -hmm. State, but I heard him say it, I think, on his show, <clears throat> and I saw him tweet something about it that like his biggest pet peeve is getting called Josh when his name is Joshua. And it's his That's fucking fair. name. I'm That's like, fair. damn, I'll never call him Josh again. So I needed to educate you, but also no. Buckeye Nation. Call that man his name, Joshua. I will I will make sure I correct that. Sorry, Joshua, for that one. Tell Zach, you. want to get another quick word from our partner, and then I'm going to talk Laronitis. Perfect. We're going to talk about James Laronitis mm -hmm. coming right up. We'll be right back. I think I can speak for all of us when I can say we want to have better sex. Even if you have the best sex you've ever had, best sex in America, right? BIA. You still want to have better sex. And I got the product for you. It's called Joy Mode. It's similar to those electrolyte packets you put in water. You, all you do, you can carry it in your wallet, your purse, whatever. Your wife can carry it for you. All you do is you open it up, put it in 68 ounces of water, and it gets you right. It supports blood vessel support, cardiovascular and heart health. It supports erection, quality, firmness, and sex drive. It has a bunch of different vitamins. They've all been assessed by peer-reviewed journals, and all ingredients have been studied and researched in humans. It's safe, and it gets it going. You want to increase your sex, improve your sex life, go check out Joy Mode. All you have to do is go to usejoymode.com forward slash menace, and you get 20% off. I ordered it two weeks ago, and I'm telling you right now, boy, it works. <laughs> go check it out. You won't regret it. Valentine's Day's coming up. Get your shit hard, man. Full on bricked up, as Chris says. 20% off with code Menace. Go to J-O-Y-M-O-D-E. Use joymode.com forward slash Menace. Great sex solved naturally. No prescriptions. Just a little packet to get your shit bricked up. Go check it out. There you go. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the men's basketball team should have been sponsored by them with Chris Holman as a coach. But now that Chris holman has gone, can't even do it. Nope. Can't, can't do, even it. do it. Um, it's funny, but on the timeline right now, the temperature check, Ohio State timeline, everyone's geeking out about Chris Holman being out of here. I, I can't remember a time where a coach was so universally hated at Ohio State. I can't remember a time where a coach was as universally bad and still had a job. At, so. at, Ohio, at Ohio State. Other places, happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, for the Buckeyes, what are we right. doing? Uh, but but the, the guys were there, a bunch, bunch of nuts. They said, don't let the Chris Holtman firing distract you from the fact that Blake Quorum had an LLC set up in Wyoming with Connor Stallions listed on the article of incorporation. Did they ever get to the bottom of that? Nope. Bro, but it's coming. So much of the Connor Stallion shit just went away. No, it didn't. Well, it like it like went. I guess it went away. I mean, it feels like to me it went away when they didn't even like. No one like the whole guy at the what the the uh, Central Michigan game. I'm yeah, that ever came out about it when that was absolutely no. Connor Stallions. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And then the LLC, <laughs> like nothing happened to Blake Corbin. He was good. We that's why. Kept... That's why. Shout out to the OVE guys. Matt Fink is one of the best follows because he'll he'll say it like once a week. Yeah. Like, someone will tweet something about the Michigan National Championship, and he'll quote tweet it and be like, never forget, we never found out why Connor Stallions was on the sideline for the Central Michigan game. Like, he's not letting that shit go. He's going to bring it up. Well, and, like, some, like I, I feel like the more time goes between kind of an announcement of whatever punishment and this happening and kind of the NCAA about to crumble like a fucking cookie. It's a bad deal. Like, a lot of these things get forgotten. Like, this starting running back on a national title team had an LLC with a guy who was running a signal stealing, like racket network. Like just it's it's really in the vacuums. Like so many weird turns of events. You're like, what? Yeah. He was selling used vacuums. What the what? And by the way, right after that LLC got formed, both of Connor Stallion's parents' homes got paid off in cash, straight up in cash, just like that. Oh, how quickly we forget. Mm hmm. And people, remember, people yelled at us that his parents are rich. Both of them are middle school teachers. <laughs> How do they come up with an enormous amount of cash to pay off both homes? Only fans. Only vacuums. <laughs> Only vacuums. They both suck. Who saying, sucks both are, better? Both are sucking.
both are sucking. So, and and like Stein's going on a mockery, of like going to the games, going to the Woody. Like, what a guy, man. Well, he went to the horseshoe, not the Woody. The horseshoe. The I mean, he probably set up cameras at the Woody too. He probably went everywhere. Yeah, but don't worry, Ryan Day was in Big with Bar, like getting it. <laughs> if that's even still a thing, I don't even know if it's there. You think he'll be at the Ohio State Michigan game next year? Would I don't he, know. Would he risk that? Risk what? He's unemployed. He can go wherever he wants now. No, I'm not talking about the job. Shit. Oh, you're, you're talking, talking about, about his life. Yeah, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Connor. If Connor's down, look, this is this is what he's going to be doing for the next eight months, right? Growing hair. <laughs> it's be growing hair. It's going to get the flow going. What's your son call it? The cheddar or some shit like that. <laughs> Something like that. Get the cheddar going, and he's going to pop out at the Michigan Ohio State game in Columbus. <laughs> Looking like Matthew McConaughey. Looking like Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Honestly, he doesn't look right with hair. And also, I don't. You saw he he dropped his prices for cameo. Yeah. So for those that didn't follow, we tried to buy a cameo of Connor Stallions for the show. He declined that shit instantly. Mm -hmm. And so now my phone all the time will like give me an alert. Connor Stallions dropped his price from seventy to sixty bucks. And then the other day, it was like, Connor Stallions dropped his price again from 60 to 50 bucks. <laughs> like, damn, should have taken our $70 and done our video, Connor. Right. Connor, Connor, Connor. Um, some Georgia news, some contender news real quick before the Laronitis stuff. Scott Cochran is no longer on staff at Georgia. Um, sources confirmed at 247. He was, just strength and, he was strength and conditioning at Bama and then special teams at Georgia? <laughs> yeah. How surprised are you that he's no longer with them? I mean, I, I guess a little surprised because Kirby's known him for so long and worked with him for so long. And I mean, it was it was a weird a weird transition for me. Like I I, I don't know that I've heard of strength coaches becoming on field position coaches. Right. It's I, it's, just, it's just a bizarre. Chris and I talked about it. Like, if you're a strength coach at Bama, he did a great job, right? He leads with Kirby Smart because he wanted to be on the field. Nick Saban told him no. Like, you're the strength coach. That's your expertise. That's what you're going to be. He goes to be the special teams coordinator at Georgia, and it's like, how well does he know special teams? I guess he could have, in theory, been sitting in every special teams meeting at Bama, which he might have, and taking notes, learning, studying, maybe. But that's it was, it's, it was a bizarre thing when it happened. But it also, him and uh, the, what, the receiver coach? Yeah. Both got let go or resigned or left. Like, there's a story there. We don't know what it is, but there's a story there. There's something going on at Georgia, and I don't know if it's about coaches not doing their jobs or Kirby being sick of guys, but this isn't just your normal, uh, what, coach turnover. At least it doesn't feel like it to me. No. And if Scott Cochran was the one that designed that uh, that fake punt to Justin Fields, you deserved to get fired years ago, <laughs> just for the record. Yes. Because that shit was ass. Literally of the course most, he did. Literally the most famous person in the state of Georgia, a fucking quarterback wearing number one that everybody wanted, comes in for one special teams play all year. What are we doing? Literally. I, I mean, I Maybe that, they won't notice. Yeah, maybe they won't notice. Big number fucking one in the middle there. Former five-star quarterback. Yeah. every like every, Literally, Georgia, they chant his name at games. Where's number one? Highest, what, second highest rated player in the state of Georgia history. I don't know. Whatever. Um, Laronitis, his name has been floated around, been uh, been pushed out there for the Browns job. Don't know what Browns job it is. I guess they already have a linebackers coach. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Yeah, it, 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 they said it's an un, like, it's not even a job that they have, but they're just trying to get him on staff, I guess. Okay. So I, I have a couple thoughts on this. Number one, Laronitis has been there for a year. He's worked with linebackers. He's been in meetings. He's in the off-season clinic, the staff. Like, you do all these things as with your young coaches to try to develop them. Guys that don't have experience, you try to get them experience, right? He's done all of that. And I know he has the name. I know he was a great player. Look, He looks the part, talks the part. He's been mentioned in recruiting. But why hasn't Ryan hired him yet? He has an open spot. What's the reason for that? The only reason that makes any sense in my brain, and I was in the industry for, what, 15 years, is that Ryan is trying to hire someone better. Mm -hmm. And if he can, he will. And if not, then maybe he'll consider hiring James to be a first-time, full-time football coach. That's all it tells you. If he thought James Laronitis was a superstar, like Brian Hartline of the defense, he would hire him. Right? 
Why else is he waiting to make that move? What I think happened is James wants that job. Ryan's not ready to give it to him. So he, his agent got on the line, called a, he called in a favor in Cleveland. I mean, there's no job there. It's not like the linebacker's job, assistant linebacker's job. Like, we don't even know what the job is. Yeah. And with the NFL, you can add jobs. There's no yeah, limit you can to make up jobs whenever you want. Exactly. Like, there's like three special teams coordinators over there at, Sam, at the 49ers. Yeah. It's just so – it's like I believe – Knowing what I know in the inner workings of, of being a college football coach, James certainly has an agent. He had one as a player. He has one as a coach. I believe that that agent is trying to get shit moving, right? So you put a little pressure on Ryan. James is getting looked at by the NFL. Perceive value to the public. The Buckeye fans will start freaking out. Try to force his hand a little bit. Try to make that manifest. That's what I think is happening. Yeah, I think so too, and I I don't think it's happening though. I I don't think that they're gonna hire him at any point. No, I'm just in saying the near that future. That, right, to get the headlines. That's I think they're I think they're gonna try, but I, I don't think it's gonna work. In fact, I think honestly, if I'm Ryan Day, I have even more <laughs> resentment. Like you tried to strong arm me. What are you doing? Like you leaked the story two years ago and said that I didn't call you back when you called trying to get a job, um, and that's why I went to Notre Dame. And then you kind of made it seem like you'll be the next coach on staff. You didn't get you didn't get the linebackers ready. Your your only draw is really recruiting, and now you're trying to strong arm me again to get that. Yeah, I'd, spot. I'd be a little I'd be a little annoyed with if I was Ryan. Day. Right, because well, remember when that story came out, he kind he kind of had it leaked to. I mean, I'm not I'm not I don't know if it was him for sure, but all the people he played with coming out and saying, "Oh yeah, James oh, called Ryan." I heard it from Ryan. a bunch of people. Literally, every you heard it from the whole <laughs> linebacker core that he played with. Yeah, I mean, and on a lot of people yeah. other than them. Yeah, I so, mean it, it's. I just, it's that's what I think is going on. Mm -hmm. And if I'm Ryan, I'm not. I, I ain't. I ain't doing anything. No, like go to Cleveland. And also, like I don't think Jim Knowles gives a fuck about who played for what. No, <laughs> just to keep it just no. as a sidebar. <laughs> because guess what? It doesn't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. Can you coach? Can you teach? Can you make players better? Yeah. Like I believe he can recruit. We've already kind of seen you know, his name pop up enough that I'm like, okay, he's probably going to be a dynamic recruiter. I would have guessed that without those articles being written and those kids giving those interviews. But is he a great teacher and developer? That's what I don't know, and I'm not saying he's not. But on inside the Woody, they're, I mean, they work with them every day. And there, was no, there was no hesitation with Coach Key. There was no hesitation with Corey Dennis, Keenan Bailey. Like, just elevate, elevate, mm -hmm. elevate. There's hesitation here. I don't know why. I'm not claiming that's the reason, but that would be my best guess. Yeah. Now, and, and maybe, and maybe Ryan Day created this problem, right? Like maybe Ryan Day, with you know bringing on Corey Dennis the way he did, with kind of continuing to elevate Brian Hartline and Coach Key. I mean, all guys <laughs> that are first time, full time jobs, at the, full time coaching jobs at the same time. Maybe Laronitis, you know, felt like this should be me next. Like I should be next. And when it didn't yeah. happen. It's like, well, what the fuck's going on? But also on the other side of it, Ryan is also learning. Maybe I need to send these guys elsewhere to go get right before they come here. Because at Ohio State, you have to be one of the best in America. Your resume has to be one of the best in America to get that job. Not, oh, I'm in the building. Because that's how you turn into who? Dabo's cousins. Yeah. And that's not what you want here at Ohio State. That's not what you want anywhere. Any, but well, especially Ohio State. I mean, I, I I don't mind Dabo's cousins down there at Georgia Tech. Like We're not competing for best job anywhere. So we got to groom coaches to get yeah. there. But but no, at Ohio State, you're 100% right. And it's like, I wish Ryan Day would have made an emphasis earlier to let coaches go develop themselves before elevating them because Ryan Day ultimately is responsible for the coach's culture that he's put forth. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. I don't know. Where, where do you think, if you had to guess, is James Arnidas coaching with Ohio State next year as a uh, – a analyst or, or intern or GA or whatever. I mean that's impossible to know Cleveland might offer him some job and he might take it but I don't think he's going to be the, a full-time the 10th coach I don't think he's going to be a full-time coach and that's just my guess I also think the quickest path for development for James is going to be the NFL coaching route because I think right now it's not hard to see that he's probably going to project as a good recruiter I mean all the linebackers bring him up mention him like that's that's no problem. The other side of it is, can you coach and develop? Like mm -hmm. like, are you that? And so I think honestly, if you're already naturally a good recruiter, 
why would you go bounce to other college places when you can go to the NFL, go get that NFL well, resume and then come back? Well, I mean, I mean unless, you, unless reason, you disagree. Well, the main reason is because recruiting, guys get jobs for that in college football. If he's great at that, he can get jobs as a great recruiter. Yeah. I mean, they they do, but like Ryan Ryan already knows he's a great recruiter, right? In my yeah, at Ohio State you have to be both, but he right. can get college jobs as a great recruiter. So I don't in think the NFL you don't recruit. Right. Like literally, his strength is not applicable in the NFL. Well, I think that's why it's important for him to go. Yeah, to maybe learn how to yeah, do to, it. To learn, I think this is a developmental road and not just a I want to I want to be here here and there because I'm sure that James Lardinus could have gotten a linebacker coach at some other school. Oh yeah. Is what I'm saying. But I think he wants to be in Ohio. I think he wants to be at Ohio State. And so I think for him development-wise, if you want to be a great coach, go to the NFL. Like, go go be Jeff Halfley. Like, like go learn the ropes. Go learn X's and O's at, well, a, at a clip that you can teach it. Like, go do that is what I'm trying to say. It's 12 months out of the year to just work on football. Right. That's for sure. But he also played in the NFL for eight years. Mm -hmm. Like, he's been – the guy has to know football. I just don't know if he can teach kids. That's what I'm saying. Like, te like more teaching it rather than, like, being told what to do and then go do it. Because we talk about players having natural gifts for, like, absorbing information. Well, not everybody's you, James. Like, not yeah. everybody can do that. So it's a big, That's the biggest battle form, great former players face mm -hmm. is they just did it. Like, when they got coached to do something a certain way, they just did it. And some of the stuff they did was natural, and they just – and and when they deal with a kid that doesn't play like them, it's hard for them to figure out like what what can I do to make that kid get it done, mm -hmm. like to do it. It's like I I just would do it if I was told this. This kid won't. We need to have new ways, new ways of teaching, visual learning, walkthroughs, like all the different ways you can develop a kid. You got to figure out a kid, and that's what they struggle with. And I think Laronitis could have punched his ticket this year, Zach, if he did one thing. You know what that one thing is? Develop. C.J. Hicks. If C.J. Hicks was ready, yeah. if C.J. Hicks didn't look lost against Mizzou, mm -hmm. if C.J. Hicks didn't get washed down and played, you know, poorly in the couple snaps he did, I think Laronitis could have absolutely punched his ticket. Yeah. If you had guys like Lair, like uh, like C.J. Hicks and guys like Gabe Powers and guys like Nigel Glover raving about Laronitis and about how much they've progressed, the way that we heard people rave about Coach Key, yeah, the way we heard people even rave about Corey Dennis at a certain to a certain extent, and honestly, guys like Todd Fitch too. If you would have heard players talk like that and then get on the field and be ready to go, it would have been, we need him here. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Day's looking at the room and basically kind of telling us without telling us, we don't need Laronitis here. We like him. He has he does a good job connecting with the kids, but we need more development from the linebacker room. And honestly, like that's, that's the room this last year on defense. It was probably the weakest unit on the field. And so Knowles deserves a lion's share of the, of the blame for that, and I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it, fair or not, has to fall on Laronitis' shoulders in some form or fashion. The people that want Laronitis to be a part of this, it's like, okay, like, we get it. You think he's a great coach, but his unit didn't tell us he was a great coach. Yeah, I just haven't seen evidence. Yeah. And I always believe in show me, prove it. And the, the reality is, Chris, Jim Knowles, Ryan Day, they've worked with him every day for a year. Like, they certainly have an idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the uh, chat's mad at me for my, my critical take on, on Laronitis. Well, it, just, it is what it is. Yeah. Show me you're a great coach then. Right. Again, again, like just not, And I'm not saying he's not. Me either. I but just there's, no, see. there's no evidence. There's no evidence that he is or isn't, is, right. is my point. Exactly. And at Ohio State, you hire yeah. guys with fucking evidence. Exactly. And I think even if you're not the coach, you can tell if someone's going to be a good coach beforehand. Like before Coach Key was a full-time coach, you told me, Zach, that Coach Key is going to be a good one. Yeah. Like gonna be a good one. I can see it. The players talked about it. Like, yeah. It was it was easy. With that, we haven't seen that from Leonidas. We know he's a good recruiter. That's about it. Yeah. Like Corey Dennis was the quarterback's coach, but like people talk about how good of a job Todd Fitch does because it's like you're in that room together. So, yeah, no doubt. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Chris got it off his chest. There you go. I did. Sorry, bro. I feel like this segment was more for you, and I just fucking <laughs> well, I already gave my thoughts on it. I mean, I I I'm, I think James Laronitis could be a superstar, but I got to see evidence that he can develop and coach. And I have not, I've not seen that. And, uh, 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 albeit with limited opportunity, right? We don't know if Jim Knowles let him coach and develop CJ, CJ Hicks. Like, but I just haven't seen it. And I believe Ohio State should only hire proven coaches. And I think that's part of the problem they got into last year on offense. You had a bunch of guys doing, un, doing shit that they've never proved they can do. Rick, Rick, you're missing. Rick, you're missing the point. 
we're saying we're not ready to anoint him as a head coach or at a, at a full-time coach at Ohio State. Hold on, Chris. Ryan Day's not ready to. Right. The fuck are we talking about? Ryan Day's had a month and a half to make him a full-time coach, and he hasn't. He walks past him every day. Right. And if he does eventually, then you're like, okay, maybe Ryan Day thinks he can do it. Mm -hmm. But right now, all we know is he hasn't hired him. Like, it's that simple. Like, ask yourself in the chat, Rick, <laughs> ask yourself and answer this one. Why hasn't Ryan Day promoted him? And with that, while Rick types up an elite response, like I'm sure he will, Rick the Scholar, Rick Brick, great name on today of all days. Let's get a quick word from our partner. All right, we'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, the Super Bowl's over. Football season is in the past, and now it's on to basketball season. And if you haven't done it yet, you got to go check out Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy sports. If you don't, I love fantasy sports. I love putting a little money on it. There's the perfect tool, the best in the country, in the world, is Prize Picks. Basketball season's here. It's time to be pick pick a couple players and pick a couple of their stats, maybe rebounds, three pointers, points, assists, whatever you want, and and just project more or less. And when you do it, you put them all together. You can win up to twenty five times your money. Massive payouts at Prize Picks, and my favorite part about Prize Picks is an injury can't screw you. If you put some money on Kevin Durant, and in the first half he breaks his shoelace and doesn't play in the second half, your whole pick gets rebooted. You don't lose. It's a beautiful thing. It's the only daily fantasy sports out there that does this. If your player gets hurt, you can't lose. You can win up to twenty-five times your money. All you got to do is go to prizepicks.com forward slash menace. Use code menace to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's free money, Menace Army. And you know what I say? Don't ever turn down free money. Go check it out at Prize Picks now. There you go. Free money. Sounds like Philly wants to play me a man today. Oh, come on, Chris. We got to run it. I'm ready. No, I'm ready, bro. All right. Philly Brown versus Chris Drew. Yeah, I got to Twitch today. it up. Uh, Text Zach, but we'll, we'll get in a group chat and we'll coordinate. Yeah, I meant to give give you Philly's number. It's cool. Oh, I mean, if he just if he texts you, we're gonna put us all together after the show. We'll we'll uh, we'll do some chatting. Um, where are we at? Dylan, thanks for the five. Oh, we already already read that one. What a guy. Um, Charlotte Buckeye, thanks for the five. Just want to show love with the super chat and also Carolina barbecue is better than Texas barbecue. Argue with your mama. Do you have a preference? Um, I don't know that I'm well versed enough to give an opinion. Neither am I. I'll have to, that, that'll be my next endeavor. Yeah, neither am I. Try both back-to-back -back days, see which one I like better. Oh, are, you, are we going to fly from back and forth? Well, uh, I'm, I was going to make it. Oh. Just I, how they make it. So oh. it's a, probably not a great representation, but if if the, you know, if the. <laughs> so Zach's barbecue wins, <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, if I, if I make barbecue in a Carolina method or fashion, and then I make barbecue in a Texas fashion, like, I am still the consistent barbecuer, mm -hmm. so whichever one is better would tell you that that mode or that method is probably better. Even if I suck, like, one will suck more than the okay. other. Well, I uh, I believe you, um, and I just want the odds makers <laughs> in the chat to uh, to give us a line on the Chris vs. Philly game. What do you think? Oh, my God. What do my, you, what minus, do you I mean, we're talking, this is like some... Bama versus fucking Rice, it's like minus 39. Five-minute quarters. All right, we'll go minus 28. Minus 28. Dude, you got beat like 28 nothing three times. Yeah. A, uh, no, it's not exactly what has not exactly the score. What were the, what were the three scores of Denzel Burke's games? Uh, the first one was 21-0, 21-14, I'm I'm saying Philly's better. That, that's true. That's true. That's true. Caveman, chill out. 54 to 7 is fried. Spotting me 40. <laughs> Gorgie, thanks for, the, thanks for the Canadian Five. Name your kids Menace, since there are people in sports with names like Master and stuff. Shout out Master Teague. Help us grow this Menace Army. It's always go time. Well, things, I don't know if I should say go right or go wrong. But however they go tonight, maybe we'll, maybe, maybe we'll have a little fifth Army member. And we'll name, name him Menace Smith. Menace Smith is actually kind of a fire name. Well, you got the name Smith. You got to have something cool. Menace I say that Smith. fucking Luke. Like, <laughs> pretty. Luke Smith is like the most standard name alive. You should name him Locke. Yeah, but. Hey, but he's going to be. He's going to make that name not normal. 
He's because you talk about a menace. His name should be Menace. Oh, yeah. 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 Lukey is a menace. All the time, I'm like, Luke, what are you? He's like, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. I love little bro's cadence. Dude, he's so funny. His cadence is crazy. Uh, DJ, thanks for the two. Holtman fired. Sad he's getting money gone. Read that one. Oh, our girl, Andy Joe Taylor. Happy Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Um, what's up, Menace Army? Lady Menace here, smiley face. If anyone's in Northwest Ohio or Southeast Michigan, come check out my Valentine's show tonight. Let us know where the show is at. You can look it up on our social media. I saw it uh, yesterday, maybe. Go go check out Andy Joe. Really talented. Super. Go 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 to her show tonight. That'll be a hell of a date. Mm-hmm. Or or like a post dinner thing. Like go to dinner with your lady, then go listen to some fire yeah, country music. Like the next Taylor Swift. Hey. Like go make it shake. You feel me? Hopefully, success wise and financially. Yeah. But don't date Travis Kelsey, Andy Joe. What what tight end? It'll be uh. <laughs> Brock, Brock Bowers. Bowers. <laughs> I knew, knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I wanted to say it. Hey, I, you know what? I'll, I'll support that. Brock Bowers is so less douchey compared to Travis Kelsey. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Andy Joe Taylor and Brock Bowers. I can get behind it. Manifest. Aaron, thanks for the five. Do a live show in Cincinnati next year during the Browns game. Keep grinding. You guys are the best to grind. Cincinnati Browns in Cincy next year. Live show from there. <laughs> that, be that would be sweet. That would absolutely be jumping. I need my season tickets from the Browns. I've yeah. been on a wait list. Yeah, it's the wildest shit. Apparently like they offered you like a thirty thousand dollar pass. Yeah, dude. Like I, I, I wanted to get season tickets. They're like, all right, well, you could get them, but you start in like the last row of the stadium, and then every year you'll have a chance to upgrade. It's going to take like you know, I don't know, five, ten years to get good seats. I'm like, all right, do I, is there any other option? They're like, yeah, you could pay a shitload more. And you get on the I don't know whatever list, mm-hmm. and you like when they come available, you'll be allowed to buy them. They didn't tell me they're going to be in like suites and shit. <laughs> they call me, they, Chris, they called me like right before the preseason started last year. And I just got on the list like in February, like one year ago today. They're like, hey, good news. We got some seats that open up. I was like, oh, no shit. They're like, yeah, they're in the whatever club and you get all you can eat, all you can drink. It's on the field in the tunnel. I'm like, what the? F-? They're like, yeah, for four tickets, it's um, it's going to be. Like forty five or sixty thousand dollars, and I was like, ha, ha, "You think I what? You need a check today? You think I got sixty k just laying around for some Browns tickets? Are you on drugs?" And I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. I just want normal ass seats that are decent. That's all. Those don't exist. So anybody anymore. works for the Browns, man, I'm not looking for free ones. I'll pay, but I ain't. I ain't gonna be hanging out with like fucking Denzel Ward's family. Like, <laughs> the fuck. Which would be cool. Would be cool. Oh, I would love yeah. to do it. Miss Ward, if you want. Oh, Denzel um, Ward's mom's awesome. Yeah. But I can't afford to hang out with her at a game. <laughs> Unless Denzel throws an invite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Wolf, thanks for the five. UCLA have any O linemen that are rumored to be interested in transferring to Ohio State? No, all rumors have kind of died down. I expect those to pick back up transfer but, portal wise in the spring because it's weird with classes right now. Yeah, you now. can't get into class right now. Right. But how weird will it be if Chip Kelly comes to Ohio State and they literally look at the roster and he's like, nope, <laughs> like not one? What kind of job did you do, Chip? You don't have one guy that can help us even provide depth? Not one. Nope. Nope. Like, yikes. Damn. Damn Justin, too, because you recruited that room. Damn right. <laughs> I'm, I'm fearful for the future. Yeah. But, but Chris is right. At this point, the portal, the portal can be open, but they can't get into class. Yeah. So what are they going to transfer to? They're going to transfer and not be able to take class. So you can't participate in spring ball. Then you join the team in the summer. They can do the same shit in the in the portal window after spring ball. Uh, yeah, it's that that's that's the that's the weird thing when you mix with the, the athletics with the school stuff. Yeah. That, okay. By the way, they're they are students still. Right, they are still students. Um, Kenneth, thanks for the two dollars. Or yeah, yeah, first like. Okay, shout out to you for the first like. We have 405 likes. I would like that number to be at 500, please, and thank you. Uh, Connor Baker, thanks for the two. Breaking, Holtman fired. Let's fucking go. Massive, 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 massive. Uh, <laughs> Gorky, thanks for the two. Riley Gaines is one hero and a gem. Hero. Riley Rhymes. Mm-hmm, Riley Rhymes. Um, Andre, thanks for my guy, Duke. Thanks for the five. Did Buddy break his controller last night when he rage quit last night? Yeah, Chris has been winning a couple games lately. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that shit on. You feel me? Okay. I'm putting that shit on. I need you to run it with Philly tonight, and I need a report. Put that shit on. 
<laughs> DJ, thanks for the two. Speeding ticket, or was it more for cause? Oh. Probably. <laughs> I'm telling you, they probably were like, you were going 70 and a 35. He's like, I was going 25. <laughs> They're like, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. <laughs> Said, that is a two. No, that's a seven. Now you're talking back to an officer. Right. Uh, Kyle, thanks for the two. Fuck Michigan. Fuck Dabo. Washington from North Carolina. Love the show. Hell yeah. Shout out North Carolina. Stand up. Bro, Clemson's had a real quiet offseason. I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> I don't even know. Are they doing anything? Uh, no. <laughs> They're hanging out. <laughs> hanging out. They're uh, going to church. And that's a good thing. Really good thing. Uh, Andrew, thanks for the five. We've heard about all the positives of the Chip Kelly hire. What are some of the hidden traps of the hire? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, you have a guy with a big ego coming in to be an assistant. Got to take some orders, mm -hmm. right? I, I always said, like, imagine Urban Meyer working for Ryan Day or me like if I, I always say because I don't know like if I got a head coaching job and hired Urban how the fuck would that go like there's a role reversal that happens you got a really successful guy that doesn't need the job with a lot of money with a pretty big ego like there could be some butting of heads I think some of the butting of heads is not only really good but necessary but it can become too much you think they you you think Chip Kelly would allow for a uh, a straw hat or straw poll for the quarterbacks? You think Chip would be like, we're not doing that shit? No, I think I think staffs do that all the time. Okay, all the time staffs do that every year. Really, when they have a decision to make, they always pull the staff mm -hmm. because they want everyone to one share their opinion so that the guy making the decision can really take it all in from a bunch of who he thinks are really qualified, great coaches. He hired them, right? Uh, you, you always do that. But, Dim, if you think they're really great coaches and you have respect for the missed at and the third and you go through and the the vote is very sideways, what do you tell them that staff? You're like, no, we're not doing that vote. But Tony, oh, I think you guys are all idiots. No, it's, I, I appreciate your opinion. I understand. But just it, my experience and, and the big picture involved, I think this is the choice. And it's like, all right, you're the head coach. Rock and roll. Mount up. Get on your horse. Let's ride. Yeah, I'm too emotional to be in a room like that. Yeah, you are. But you, as a college coach, you have to be able to do that. You'll get in a heated argument about a third down play. And at the end of the day, the decision maker makes a decision. The whole staff has to get on board and fucking yippee ki -yay that motherfucker yeah. and sell it to their players. Because if you don't, now you don't have alignment. Now you're fucked. You're done. Your, your players are going to be awful. Yeah, I never would have made a dog. I would have I would have went out. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have. I would have went out so crazy if I was Corey Dennis. I'd be like, nah, nah, y'all got me fucked up. <laughs> y'all got me fucked up. You chose. Never mind. We know you be singing. Oh, my. Like a Bird, are you kidding me? Like Canary, like Canary Chris. Canary, Whitney Houston, Beyonce, nigga Usher, I am singing. Canary Chris. It's American Idol, we're Simon Cowell. Like, we are singing. <laughs> oh, shit. What the hell? <clears throat> if you, bro, if you start a comic chord for a whole year and I got fired because of it, hell no. I'm not, I'm not going out that way. <laughs> I will not go out that way. I do not care. I do not care. I'm, I'll tell you this, this much. I'm doing an interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm coming on Menace to Sports. Yeah. Let's talk about what really happened. Let's, yeah. Y'all really want to know what went on. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm i telling everybody. And I and I would be out of coaching forever. I was going to say, find a new career. Yeah. yeah well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do it. Um, Slim, thanks for the two. Penix, too injury prone and slow as fuck. JJ equals backup. Damn. Don't like either of them. <laughs> okay. I can, res I can respect it. I mean, not, definitely not being biased. Um, Kenneth, thanks for the five more. What's the hardest and easiest position to coach on offense and defense? The hardest, well, the hardest position to coach on offense is offensive line, for sure. I mean, it's just you have to get five guys working in unison, and if one guy fucks up, your whole room sucks on that play. And it's like, damn, I went 80%. Four out of five did a great job. Doesn't matter. Your group sucks. Receivers, you got the, the next most players on the field. But most of the time, you just need the one guy, and you don't know which one it is, but the one guy to do his job. Or if, when it comes to blocking, apparently they don't care. So I, I think that's the hardest position to coach um, on the football team. Uh, the quarterback certainly has the most going on and has the most impact on a game. Well, that's arguable even. But quarterbacks the got the most to coach, the most to teach. But offensive line is the hardest job. The easiest job? probably running backs <laughs> probably, like, here's your footwork here's your landmark go be great and that's definitely 
a misrepresentation of what really happens. Yeah. It's but... all hard is the thing. Like, it's all hard. That's just the easiest of the hard things. Yeah. I've heard you say that before, too. Remember when you made me uh, fucking recite a play call back to you oh, in yeah. the early days? That was fucking beautiful. We I should did, do that again. I like, I don't know what's going on here, bud. <laughs> um, ben, thanks for the five. Hey, Coach, how prevalent is recruiting between high schools, given that it's illegal? How are schools like IMG Academy allowed to exist? Well, they're allowed to exist because they're technically not – like they're uh, not a sanctioned high school in right. Florida high school football. So they have their own set of rules. Like – the state high school association has rules against like recruiting and this and that. IMG's not a state sanctioned high school. Right. They're like, a prep school. Like when they play St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas doesn't get a win in Florida high school for that game. But doesn't count towards players. But right? they are a school, right? They unlike the fucking Bishop Sycamore, like they're a real school. Kids go to class. So like teams will play them because it's nationally, you get national exposure. Yeah, that's why IMG doesn't play for like state titles. Yeah, they can't win a state title. Right. So it's always like the national stuff they yeah. do. DJ, thanks for the two. Imagine Ryan Day, Chip Kelly, and Quinn Ewers. Oh, God. Quinn that's Ewers. the one, man. That's, you talk about a program changing uh, situation. Quinn Ewers leaving Ohio State was so massive, considering what we watched last year at the quarterback position and the, the battle we're still in. Quinn Ewers would be coming back for, as like a Heisman candidate, mm -hmm. number one overall pick potentially. And imagine what that offense would have looked like with him last year. Well, and Holy the rumors shit. about Quinn Ewers being told that Kyle McCord would never play here. And then what? Quinn gets up here and can't get any reps. Well, he couldn't get that, That's totally different. Yeah. He showed up in the middle of training camp. What the and fuck then, you going to do? And then he went home. Right. Like, no, that so, was on him. It was, it was a he little bit. He should have just played his fucking senior year, come to Ohio State, and you'd be living in a land of riches. Bro, it's Buckeyes. crazy. It's crazy because he he was old too in high school. I think he got to Ohio State when he was nineteen. Oh yeah, he was. He got held back. Yeah, in high or middle school or whenever it was. Birth, yeah, <laughs> birth. Like, no, you can't leave the hospital for one yeah, year. You cannot leave the hospital, bud. You're you're a newborn, but dad, he's one. <laughs> um, CMDR, thanks for the two. Are you excited for the EA college football game this summer? I am. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing Madden. I don't even like Madden. <laughs> trying to get ready. I don't know. Keel, thanks for the two. Did Urban hate Saban, Harbaugh, D'Antonio, or any head coach? I mean, hate's a strong word, right? He hated losing to anyone. And if you did a great job and your team was really good, he had a, lo a lot of, like, disdain and anger towards him. Mm. I, I think he genuinely disliked Jim Harbaugh. Like, I don't think there was even respect there. But I, he respected Mark D'Antonio. He respected Nick Saban a ton, obviously. Yeah. I mean, he hired coaches from their, <coughs> from their trees. Yeah. So, <coughs> I think that, that was the difference. I think he thought Harbaugh was weird and a joke. Yeah, and honestly, he wasn't probably – didn't think he was very good for the rivalry. It's like like if you're if you're Urban Meyer, don't don't you want to face like the badass coach on the other side? Well like, – To get those wins against, right? Like the difference is, Chris, he loved – that Harbaugh was the coach at Michigan. Okay. He didn't love that Saban was at Bama or love that D'Antonio was at yeah. was at Michigan State. He hated that they were there because they were good. They were good. And Harbaugh figured I don't I know what happened the last three years, but you're talking about Urban. He loved the fact that Harbaugh was at Michigan now. Loved it. Philly said he had a man crush on Bill Belichick. Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> I didn't I never heard that. Oh, big time. That's wild. Bill Belichick came to speak at our coaches clinic and it was like the fucking president of the United States was in town. <laughs> Everything had to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. The locker room walkthroughs. It was like, damn, you really got a hard on for this old ass dude. <laughs> it's good though. I mean, one of, one of the best ever. Right? But I mean, let me tell you, you meet Bill Belichick. There's some awe in that. Mm -hmm. Cause I met him. I was like, damn, I am shaking Bill Belichick's hand. This is fucking crazy. Did he dress up, wear a collared shirt or anything when he came, or just wore? No, man, he looked like he always looks. Okay, like he had a, he had a, like a nice shirt on. It was kind of wrinkled, tucked in with some like cheap khakis. Mm -hmm. Hair was kind of a mess. But when you talk to him, you're like, damn, this is a smart fucking dude. Like you, know, you can just tell. You know, he's never been in any of the Madden games. Oh, I didn't. Like it just says it just says Patriots head coach. Like he gets like the NCAA treatment. Like he, <laughs> he just I guess he doesn't would, want he doesn't he want to doesn't want to sign off. Yeah. yeah, people don't want to. He, he doesn't want anybody to lose Super Bowl with him. Like, How old are does he have grandkids? All it takes is you one grandkid to turn like eight, and he's like, Papa, why aren't you in the game? It's like, damn, 
Oh, all right, all right, I'll sign it. I want little Johnny to play with play his with grandpa him. as the coach. Some of the historic teams. I mean, he's. I mean, he's definitely at that age where he could have grandkids. I mean, shit, his son is. A, yeah, I don't. His yeah. son looks like he might be a virgin, but that's another story. Yeah, definitely, definitely given off. I haven't left the basement in three years. Vibes. <laughs> yeah. It's cool though. You know, like, dad lets me out to come to practice. Right. Well, he, dad lets me out to go to practice. It's more, more what it would be. But um, want to get one more quote from our partner Zach, and then close out the show. Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army. It's not time to stop gambling. I know that much. Football season's over, but it's still a great opportunity to bet on some basketball. I'm not a basketball fan, but I will throw some money on some props. Shout out our guy Mensa, who will give you all the prop bets you need. And as always, the best sports book out there, my bookie, has got your back. You can parlay anything in the world. I'm talking rebounds, assists, probably how what what color Gatorade they get when they go to the bench. You can bet it all at my bookie. All you got to do is go to my bookie, use promo code Menace, and get that deposit bonus right now. Use our promo code and go lock in for basketball season. It's a time to build your bankroll because March Madness is a month away, baby. Mensa's got you with the picks. My bookie's the best sports book in the world. Go check it out now and get that free cashish. Mensa better heat the fuck up. That's all I know. (laughs) He's literally right across from Zach. (laughs) Damn right. He better heat the fuck up. Heater, heater. Now I can fire his ass. I couldn't fire him before. He better heat the fuck up. (laughs) I guess Um, I could have fired him before, but he would have been like, okay. (laughs) Like, no big deal. Um, Where are we at? Coach Zach, thanks for the 10. Zach, when we have the bad boys moment, send out that bat signal. Your friendly neighborhood Marine and close friend will pull up. That's fucking a right. Oh, my goodness. Let James go learn somewhere else and come back when ready. Amen. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Like, we love James Laronitis. Buckeye Nation does. I think he's going to be an outstanding coach. Let him go cut his teeth somewhere else and come back and be a great one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let him be a great one. Jordan, thanks for the five. Happy Valentine's Day, Lady Buckeyes. I'll take one of you out with the $200. Zach will be giving me April 25th. Jordan, there's no chance. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you already know it's proven. Like, if I lose, I will pay you. But there's no chance I'm losing. I will find a way. <laughs> I will go. I'll find out where J.J. McCarthy's training. And I will yeah. take him out and pay for everything and get him to wild out, and I'll have a content creation team there. Like, I will win this money, even if it costs me tenfold so to lose. Get him to, to turn win. up. <laughs> Man, what? Oh, if he's down at if he's down at Exos in South Florida, I will have him at Tootsie's three nights in a row. Just one video. One video comes out. What's it? One video, and I'll hit him with a push key, like the white power. And it'll be one of those, set. like, uh, I need to get my guy a dance. Okay, which one do you want? No, no, all of them. <laughs> I want all of them. <laughs> that's fried uh where are we at caveman my guy thanks for the two spring game live show tailgate what are you thinking that's in 20 days big dog what is i, I know spring football starts in 20 i was like days. no it's not yeah, yeah. spring football starts in 20 days we, we are we are working on it and I'm, I'm really hopeful that this year we get it done yeah me too we should we should have some prelim preliminary 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 pre- 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 liberty liberty things to talk about here hopefully in the next two three weeks my that's my hope and then some solid plans, you know, April 1st. Well, no, that's April Fool's Day. I don't want to do that to you. April 2nd. I mean, that's good. If we do it on April 1st, who's really accountable? <laughs> right. Uh, Chris, up. What, hold on. What's, what's your best April Fool's joke you've heard? Like like that somebody did? Because I got a great one I did to Justine. No, I, bro, I'm not going to lie. I'm boring. You don't do anything fun? No. No. I put on Facebook. Justine's cell phone number, and I, and I made it so anyone in the world could see it but her. And I said, hey, I need everybody on here right now. I'm doing an April Fool's joke. Text or call Justine and ask her if she still has the baby goats for sale. <laughs> and she's, like, getting all these texts and calls. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm, like, looking at her like, she's crazy. I'm like, what? Who did you give your number to? Like, what? The- <laughs> I guess, well, it was like, hilarious. You told her at the end of the day? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. like at the end of the day, I told her. I, probably, or I showed her the post. I probably would have never told her. <laughs> Just let it let it ride. Um, busting up, go Bucks! Thanks for the five. Trying to get into my bookie. It's a match deposit, right? And how fast are the transactions if you win? Just wondering. Happy Hump Day, Chris. Find a hoe. Wow. <laughs> I, you know, 
I don't have a great answer for that only because it has to be a new sign up. And now I've had a my bookie account for like fucking four years. Yeah. So I, I don't know. But it used rap. to be it used to be there was rollovers and they got rid of that like a year ago. And I'm not exactly sure how it is now, but I know people are are really happy with them. So it can't be that it can't be hard. Um, DJ, thanks for the five. Y'all want to roll? Let's fucking go. Difference between UM cheerleader and an elephant, about 50 pounds. <laughs> How do you even it out? Four speed the elephant. Christ. Oh my Jordan, God. thanks for the two. Corny. Oh, uh, here we go. Return of Shane. Chris, 2023 season, not impactful, huh? We said not sexy. And Zach said it too. You never want to add Zach in these. You never want to give me whatever. Well, we'll because, read it. Chris, I say things and I say them in a very like, this is my opinion way. You say things like, let me dunk on you motherfuckers right now. Wait, like you can just bring a different energy. Wait, did you feel like I was dunked on them when I was talking about how the season will be remembered? I feel like you're dunking on them all the time. No, no, no. That one I wasn't because we talked about it. it's like, yeah, will, no, that's fair. Will they yeah. ever be considered like a 2019 LSU? Yeah, no. Will they ever be considered a 2020 <laughs> Alabama? No. Will they ever even be considered a, 20, a 2014 Ohio State? Well, yeah, because they were undefeated. That, that's that's their okay. Because I'm I'm just thinking about like the, the sexiness and the funness of it. Like yeah, the, no. Like, this makes sense. Shane's an old head. This one is for Shane's people. Like, this is for y'all. See, that's me dunking on him. All the other stuff, it's just like... Well, yeah, like, well, yeah. what Michigan did, which, I mean, over the last 20 years, people would tell you is not possible, yeah. is they played old school football mm -hmm. and won 15 games, didn't lose, and won the natty. I mean, they did what people said was impossible, which is incredibly impressive. Super impressive. I just don't think it's sexy. Well, no, it's not sexy, but it's still incredible. See, it, exactly. I, and I said both things. Great team. You never said anything about Michigan was incredible. Oh, I said it wasn't. I said it was incredible that they were able to win a title completing 10 passes. I yeah. definitely said that sentence. Yeah. That sentence rolled off the tongue. Anyway, back to Shane. Look, Shane, maybe I'd be nicer to Michigan if you paid your bet. But we'll <laughs> read this one. 2023 season, not impactful, huh? First round quarterback, ends career, third all time in college win percentage. Joe Moore, finalist, O-line, best running back duo in the nation false d gave up 156 points in 15 games including five top 17 uh, record 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 and still zero bets paid got it that's a good point by shane though no it, it absolutely is a good point <laughs> no one no one disputed any of it no i just disputed the you know i don't think it's sexy huh? in fact in the chat let me know. Was this is this Michigan team sexy? And also, what you forgot to mention is the fat ass asterisk at the end of it because y'all cheated. Right. Like, talk about that. You want to get the list of facts going? Talk about buddy cheating. <laughs> anyway, Jordan, thanks for the tomatoes. He said Shane's super chat sucked. Oh, no, he didn't. I can't see him. So Chris will do that shit. <sighs> Jordan, thanks for the two more. Zach's gonna learn me tons of JJ. Put some cocaine on him. Put some of the snow Man, skis. I'm telling you, AI is a crazy thing. I got it cooking right now. Did you uh <laughs> did you celebrate Fat Tuesday yesterday? I mean, well, technically. I mean, it was Mardi Gras in a hotel room. I know that much. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to get like the putchkis on Tuesdays. They have I don't know what the fuck them. that is. It's like the just the thick powdered donuts that are like no, we didn't do food. that. Well, okay. what I went out with Justine. Have you seen her? She Whoa. doesn't eat shit like that. Whoa there, Jamal. Hey. Hey. We love Puchkis. Sounds good. Uh, what is this one? What's long and hard? Okay. A UM football fan. First grade. Zach, I don't get it. A Michigan football fans first grade. Oh. I mean, they're in first grade for a long time, and it was oh. really hard for them. Oh, maybe I'm the idiot here. Yeah. Some of you are like, what's sure you're not a Michigan yeah. fan? <laughs> maybe I was in first grade for a long time. Probably. <laughs> no, not. I was. In, I wish I was in first grade for longer. I was fucking 13. I wish I was in first grade now. My Lily's in first grade. Her life is fucking elite. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They don't know. Like, you know what she's worried about every week? Hey, hey, Dad, can I have snack cart money for Tuesday so I can get an ice cream? I'm like, God, I just want to be you. Dog, my little brother gets stressed about the flavor Gatorade I pick him up. That's what I'm saying. Like, I just want to be six. Yeah. Can you imagine? To be six again. Living her best life. My little diva. Uh, I love the fam, dog. We got to get together soon. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, we're getting we are this weekend. Yeah. What do you mean? My fault. I just had a blast. See, Zach... Man, honestly, we need to take a camera crew to your to this volleyball game because I feel like this one's gonna get kind of crazy. Quinn would kill you. <laughs> she would. She'd, She'd be like, "What? I don't want this attention." She definitely would. But I'm here. 
Um, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be outside though. I'm gonna be talking shit for her. Jordan. Thanks for the two more more tomatoes. Still corny. Damn, Shane, he's really going crazy on you. Last one of the day, DJ. Thanks for the two longest three years of a UM play a football player. The freshman year. <laughs> I just hate Michigan. So I got a ton of topics, I guess, for tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, we'll save it for tomorrow. That's yeah. fine. You're great today, dog. You're great today. Well, thank you. It's a Valentine's Day. Yep, it is. I'm it enthused. Is. It is enthused. Like, we got two more. Should I guess? Oh, my goodness. They're just firing away. Blue Wolverine, I've not seen you in here for a while. Good to see you again. What happens when OSU chokes? They go blue. Oh, oh. that's a good one. I like that one. That, that a, is nifty. That's a good one. Blue Wolverine. See, that is a super chat of the day. I'm just saying, like, there's... They're out there. Yeah. The witty, smart Michigan fans. And honestly, they watch this show in Super Chat. The problem is the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. That one, that one's a good one. Thank yeah. you for being over here. DJ, thanks for the two. Talk, 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 talk. But y'all broke as fuck. Shaking my, shaking my head. David, thanks for the five more. Team up north beat the worst Ohio State QB in 15 years and the worst saving team since 07. Mm. I think it's fair. That's not not true. It's not not true. That's my favorite phrase, I think, of yours. <laughs> ism, I guess, Zachism. It's not not true. All right, Zach, get us out of here, big dog. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Hey, go here in all reality. I know I do a bunch of sexual shit for fun, but go make somebody feel special on Valentine's Day, whoever it is. It could be a friend. It could be a daughter, a niece, an aunt, definitely your mama. Like, make somebody feel special today. It's a day of love. So that's what we do. We, we spread love. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Menace out.